Bienvenidos a todos. Como habéis podido ver. Welcome uh, everyone. As you were able to see, we will have a Spanish session. I believe it is a very important for a virtual island summit globally for us not to only speak in English, but to speak other uh, language from the participants with from a different language. Uh, we had a French session a couple of days ago, and today we'll have uh, this session in Spanish. Francisco Sindico is my name. I am the co-director of the Environment Governance in the Strathclyde Glasgow University in Scotland. And along with Ireland Innovation, we have been working In the files of this session, you will be able to find the final results of this work regarding this topic. But the report, it is in English. Before giving the general frame of work of this session, there are two polls that you're going to take. And the first, where you are, what, where you are representing for us to have a, chat that is very interactive and also who of you spanish is not the mother tongue because spanish it is a very important language for those of you like my case that spanish is not the mother tongue what are we going to do in the next 60 minutes we're going to be speaking the local government's topic this morning, there was a fantastic session related Norfolk, Chatham Islands, a little bit other sides of the world. But those that participated in the session this morning, you will see many topics that are very common with a common ground. We're gonna touch base about the pandemic how we have handled this, the different effects. And at the same time, we're going to see the role of the different municipalities, the mayor offices with the communities before and after the pandemic for a more sustainable future. In a general sense, we're going to see the importance at the same time of having direct representation of the islands and what we are able to accomplish throughout this representation. Because not all of the islands have this democracy, this direct representation. And for us to be able to speak about all these topics, we have two fantastic speakers. We have Marisol Andrade Calderas, who is the major from Porvenir Mayor, in Tierra del Fuego, Chile. It is a pleasure to have you here among us, Marisol. And after her, we have Emiliano Torres, the mayor of Bocas del Toro in the state of Panama. It is a pleasure to have Emiliano among us as well. Each of them will be speaking 10 minutes. And we will have enough time for us to sustain a debate related to the topics previously mentioned, but at the same time about any other topic that the two speakers are going to be touching base on and that the chat participants would like to maybe mention. To conclude, it is a pleasure and an honor for me to cooperate with Island Innovation and to do this in Spanish. And with that, Marisol, Andrade Cardenas from Chile. The floor is yours. Está en mute. She's muted. Mute, Marisol. Allí. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. First of all, it is a pleasure to say hello to all of you from Porvenir the provincial capital of Tierra del Fuego in Chile. In South America and at the end of the world at the same time. I would like to greet 
EO Island Innovation and the organizers, and to thank you for the opportunity for me to share uh, with all of you, Francesco, James, Isabel, and of course, Emiliano Torres. I would like to warmly welcome you, my colleague from Panama, Emiliano, and myself from Chile. I would like to greet all the homes that are seeing this and how we are able to communicate because even though we are in different parts of the world, we're able to communicate. And I hope that internet is working well because sometimes I experiment connectivity issues. If you can help me with the presentation, please, so we can start. I will, uh, as I said, I am from Porvenir in uh, Tierra del Fuego in Chile. We have uh, the Chilean Antarctica and the South America region. And the third circle is where we are at in the large island of Tierra del Fuego. In the next slide, you're going to be able to see specifically the surface of Tierra del Fuego. We have a surface of Chile and Argentina as we share with our siblings from Argentina. You can see the borderline. And the Chile side, where I live, is in the circle, is Porvenir, which is the capital of Tierra del Fuego. To the north of Porvenir, you're able to see Primavera. Well, Tierra del Fuego province has three communities. North, we have Primavera, which means spring. And then we have Porvenir, and to the south, we have Timauquel. I would like to highlight that the three points of the beautiful island of Tierra del Fuego are completely different because to the north, there's an exploitation of oil. It's an oil community. However, the south, we have all the scenic beauty, the landscape, lakes, mountains, animals. And it's beautiful, a beautiful place. And we are in the center, and we have a his cultural his historic patrimony. And from the Argentinian portion, we have uh, three communities where precisely Rio Grande, where the mouse is, and in the middle, Tolhin, and to the south, we have Ushuaia. Ushuaia, it is a very well known worldwide and six communities that create Tierra del Fuego with the separation that Chile has 29,484, 7 square kilometers, and Argentina territory 18,507, square kilometers. That correspond in 38,57% of the island occupation. Next slide, please. As I stated before, Porvenir is the provincial capital. And as you're able to visualize, this is a panoramic view of our community. Porvenir has a population of 7,446 and a surface of 1,707 square kilometers. In Porvenir, we are a very small island, 3,62 percent of the total population of Magallanes and the Chilean Antarctic, where Punta Arenas is the regional capital. And we have the Magallanes. And the economic activity will be uh, the fisheries, different fisheries that are processing salmon, cod, oysters, and also king crab. The volume of work is based more than anything in this type of economic activity. And sometimes it, this generates a vulnerability to porvenir as we depend a lot of fisheries, which is a, an exclusive economic activity that affects the work labor. And within the fisheries, uh, there is a big gap. 
and that is provided employment to 700 people. And the fragility at the same time, that if this company has any type of problem, it generates unemployment, 60% of unemployment. And at the same time, at this makes our economy very vulnerable. Another economic activity is agriculture, cattle, excuse me. We work with bovines. And in 2016, 6,881 of tons and 4,092 tons of meat. Tierra del Fuego within Magallanes region has a lot of productivity. And if we speak about the sheep, 704,463 heads, cattle heads of the total region of 1,349 and 129. And as you can see, the development of avocados in Tierra del Fuego of the three communities that I mentioned earlier. Another Thing that I would say would be mining the gold. You can see how the mountains is Baquerano. We are able to extract oil and gold artisanally, but it's the origin of Porvenir. It was the story of California. And at the same time, you can see when everyone came to mine the gold and in Primavera, it said production of oil, where we have the national company of oil in NAP and the extractive work because we are not processing this in the region, in the north of the country. And when we go back to the community, we pay the most expensive fuel in Chile. It's an irony, I know. But at the same time, I would like to mention the touristic development. Next slide, please. As this was mentioned earlier, Francesco, the idea would be related to the pandemic and how are we going to face this? And I would like to say at the same time that Chile and the president of the Republic mentioned at the same time from March, 18th for public calamities in the national territory and based on the COVID-19 pandemic. He started off for 90 days and after three months, on June 16, it, it, we were granted an extension and the extension was granted again, the catastrophe states for 90 additional days. How has this affected us? The other slide, please. What I'm trying to say with this, as you're able to visualize, we are a small community. And we have a community hospital, a small hospital that is not very complex. We don't have any medical specialty. It's just like a medical dispensary. And they need to help the whole province of Tierra del Fuego. For us, it is a risk, as you were able to see in March, we struggled a lot as a community for us to be able to be deployed as a region in quarantine. 23 hours, we started quarantine for the first time, but because we have a large index of contagious, of contagion. And we have 109 confirmed active disease. It is not a lot if we compare this with the city, but for us, it, that we are in an island, the small community is very dangerous. On a regional level, we have 162 that are positive. In the Porvenir region, we have the largest index of, contagious, of contagion in the region within the country. For us, why is it dangerous? Because we live in an island. And at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, any health problem, usually, they are evacuated to the clinical hospital of Punta Arenas. But what does it mean for them to be evacuated? 
it depends on the weather conditions. Sometimes it's the weather conditions, we're isolated, air, maritime or terrestrial for two or three days, we are disconnected from the world, let's say, and it's a risk factor. Another risk factor, as I highlighted, there's a large index of contagion and we are always afraid that the authorities and myself, that there is a specific moment in which we need an urgency, an emergency, the availability on, of beds, and it will be terrible for all of us. We have lost neighbors due to COVID-19 pandemic, and this has harmed the community a lot because as I said, this is a small community where usually we know each other or we are very well located and it affects a lot the small community, as I mentioned earlier. And this is the reason why we struggle since August 23rd. And I issued a letter requesting quarantine declaration for Porvenir as well, because we were seeing that the Punta Arenas was going to be under quarantine. Yesterday, as I said, we started quarantine and I hope that with these we are able to control, contain or mitigate the level of contagion and for us to be able to be in peace. Between March till to date, we had three good months in which we had a zero contagion. However, but this is something that affects the the trust and the population are starting to, let's say, take lightly the security standards. The East Argentina, also the outbreak and the same thing that happened in Punta Arenas. And the way that this has affected us and the community contagion. It is very concerning because traceability has been lost from the different sectors and that has occurred and affected us simultaneously. In this quarantine, we have essential companies open and the fisheries are, that are generating a lot of employment, as I mentioned, for the basic services or public services, such as water, electricity and so on. Something else that I wanted to mention as municipalities that we have kept on working nonstop since March till today, and that logically the social work that is required, the community work that is required in which we pretend to protect the population of Porvenir. Next slide, please. Within the work and the community work of the municipality, we had to implement a sport facility because our infrastructure is kind of small and it was collapsing where people were going for uh, the several issues and it has resulted very well. We have enough spaces for us not to have the issue of social distancing or physical dos distancing because within the standards, we have uh, washing hands, the use of a face mask and the physical distancing as well. With this being said, we have had an approach with most of them are elderly populations. And from those, we did a focalized approach and those that live alone, because we believe that living under a pandemic, being alone, afraid, this was going to harm them psychologically a lot. We have a group of 205 elders and we are calling them up, but we take them the meals and if they need any medication, we go ahead and take care of that as well. And in general, the sanitary kits, so the PPEs and community and social assistance that are directed for the children, diapers, wipes, milk, and also adult diapers with the fact that they're not going to be moving around. We also purchase nourishing meals for us to help them. And also in the urban sector, we have other people 
that we're taking them water, drinkable water. We have the responsibility, responsibility of removing the trash and first to avoid any sanitary crisis. And the thing that is most important would be payment of the basic services and to purchase medications. Marisol, I am very sorry that I am interrupting you. We need to give time to Emiliano, if you can please uh, summarize a little bit. Yes, thank you, thank you. Next slide. The challenges that we have in the pandemic time, we have two main challenges. We are struggling for the students not go back to school, just uh, virtual classes. And for those uh, children that do not have access to internet, we are providing some on-site guides and something else that we have as a country in October the 25th, we want the execution where Chile will decide in the preference for a new constitution and the composition of the institution that will be in charge of the drafting. This is a historic event of democratic participation democratic exercise, the community, the country, it is paying close attention to this. And what we want more than anything for us to be able to see that from the perspective that we have the different modalities, a new constitution that we are trying to see. We hope this is not suspended for us to be able to perform this. Next image, please. Francesco, you were speak, speaking about the future development, the touristic development. Our island, more than anything, is our province where we have beautiful biodiversity. Uh, we have a wonderful position, which is a blessing, and a cultural historic patrimony. The economic strategy that we have uh, locally and uh, provincially or regionally would be to develop the touristic sector. This is why we know that we have special places that in which the tourism should be developed. Next slide, please. Different pictures for you to be able to see and have an idea or grasp how everything looks here. The three municipalities, we created an alliance to create a touristic development for Tierra del Fuego that has more impact than a small community as we are. We want to create an alliance between the public and private stakeholders for us to develop tourism with a protective and conservation idea of the environment for this touristic development to be sustainable and for us to improve the life quality of our population. Next slide, please. I mentioned earlier that we have, and we would like to highlight, is a cultural historic patrimony in Tierra del Fuego. The Segnam people were in the north and the center of the island. In 1520, they were seen by Fernando de Magallanes when he discovered the area that is named after him. And when he passed through it, to the east, he saw fire, smoke, and he called it Tierra de los Fuegos. And Tierra de los Fuegos still has the same name of Tierra de Fuego, our island. Marisol, I'm so sorry, but we have a video. And I want for everyone to see. If you have a 30 seconds, so you can actually conclude and then we are going to play the video. Well, just to say within the Segnum, and I want for you to see the fires and this encounter of the two worlds, the original people and the European discoverers. The video now.
Muchísimas gracias. Uh, Thank you so much, Marisol. And now, in Latin America, moving up within the continent, and we're going to be speaking with someone from Central America, Emiliano Torres. The floor is yours, so you can present your island and your story. Emiliano, the floor is yours. Yes, good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you. The, the director of Island Innovation, James Elsmer, and all the staff that has invited me to this important event. To all the majors and participating authorities from the different islands representing your people. I am the mayor of Boca del Toro in Boca del Toro province and the Panama Republic. We are located in the north west of the Republic over the Caribbean Sea and with the south of Costa Rica Republic. Our district is creative over 200 islands and small islands, mangroves so with maritime ecosystems, coastal ecosystems. And we have seven large islands that are concentrated where most of the population is concentrated in a territory of 430 square kilometers. According to the census performed in 2010, 17,000 people. The economy is based mainly in touristic activity and fisheries and agriculture. We are the second touristic destination that is most visited in the, the Panama Republic with the culture, food, I would like to share my feeling, what it means to be the major of my island. First of all, I consider it is an honor and a responsibility because it allows us to seek the well-being for those of us that live here and those that visit us and the love that we have due to the fragility and the development that requires a lot of care in the administration, the management of its development. Second place, I would say that I feel satisfied for, us, for me to be able to manage and provide solutions to the different issues that arise from the different communities. The improvement of the livelihood of the citizens, the content that I have and, and the commitment with the people. The sustainable issues in my island. I'm going to be speaking about what we have done in the short period of time that I have been major. One of the challenges for us to be able to have a sustainable development in our island, it would be oriented to the culture. The main issue or the main problem of this would be for us to be able to make our youth understand or inject them at this level of responsibility for them to be able to sustain and the level of commitment that I need to acquire in our society and in their families. In the island, we have seen different initiatives, the development that should be carried out, organized and planned. It has been accomplished due to the lack of interest of different stakeholders. And the different things and the lack of development to an abrupt development of a touristic economic development. If it is not regulated or managed, it could be non-sustainable throughout time. The local economic development has been translated in the main source of employment for the community, contributing to reduce the poverty rates that are sustained in the island. At the same time, it has increased the level of solid waste and the lack of capacity for us to be able to handle the different islands. We recognize that within the issues that we need to resolve would be the creation and a reordinance plan. And the different things that we have seen uh, that they promote and participate actively in different initiatives. The development of a touristic plan along with the Panama touristic authorities. Something else is that we need to work on the weaknesses that is seeking to organize, standardize, train, create awareness to all the different stakeholders and touristic developers in the island as generating responsibility, accountability and the management and conservation and the management of waste, solid waste currently 
the municipality along with the health ministry of Panama and the uh, authorities of Panama, we are creating a plan for the management of solid waste, where we are establishing for the same time in the island a sanitary refill, in which we were putting the garbage in an open area, and also the classification of the solid waste for us to be able to have an integral management of the solid waste in the whole island. The issues generated by COVID-19 in the district the economy, how it has clashed, the different commerce, 90% of unemployment, reduction of the acquisition power, stress, anxiety, the local finances of the government, the different development projects that have been seized. So we have taken a few approaches for us to mitigate a little bit the effects of COVID-19. We have reduced 50% uh, of the staff members in the different municipalities, their wage and the salary. The different stores that were closed uh, due to COVID. Regulating this, participating in the operational centers for healthcare emergencies. In the district, we have created at the same time an operation center launched by the education ministry, linking all the different institutions of this country for us to be able to distribute the load, the workload generated by the pandemic on a national level. Regulating and providing assistance to those families that are considered more vulnerable. Fumigation programs and sanitization. And I would like to recognize, and I would like to say that I bet to the potential that my island has for me to be able to see how we can make tourism flourish again due to the beaches and the beautiful things, uh, the coral reefs, the different maritime ecosystems that we have, wildlife in my island. We are so grateful and joyful that we have so, so far going to the beach and seeing the dolphins, the best coral reefs. And with that, I would like to say that we're taking a leap of faith for us to move forward and for the population, the touristic population, for us to plan and start performing touristic visits and for us to be able to comply with the requirements that the tourist has to visit the communities and the island. So I take a leap of, leap of faith with everything that we have to offer to all the visitors of my district, of my country, and on a national and international level. I would like to share at the same time a small video related to the area to visualize how the island is composed. Let's go ahead. Okay. You were able to visualize this. 
I had five minutes for me to be able to introduce myself and for me to be able to present a minute long video. I would like to highlight that my district, because if it's an island, it's composed by small islands. And for us to be able to provide the social assistance to different areas, it gets a little bit more complicated due to the logistic and the economic issues for us to be able to reach out to them and to take the assistance. The fact that we are an island, it gives us a specific difficulty that others do not have, but are not in a line that is also that it was an advantage for us to be an island. In the pandemic, it has been a disadvantage and it doubles the issues that we are facing because many of the districts are opening up uh, the commerce, the industries that are not affected to 90% or much, but like my district which depends on 90% of tourism. With tourism, it will be affected until the touristic activities are normalized. This will be on a long term. Due to this, my district will be affected as a consequence of COVID-19 pandemic, as it has affected everyone worldwide. I would like to thank the central government at the same time, that thanks to the Legislative Assembly, they have promoted, issued a law that all the development projects on a national level that were going to be executed we're going to stop, we're stop. And those resources we're going to transfer to all the municipalities on the national level for us to have resources and for us to be able to provide assistance to everyone in our surroundings per district. If the central government didn't make that decision at the moment, we don't know how we were going to face the situation without resources, so much hunger and so much need to provide the assistance and to thank the institution from the public health ministry that have been working so hard for us to be able to distribute the load that this generated and that is generating COVID-19 as of now on a national level. And I would like to thank at the same time the sponsors of this event for everyone to be aware and to listen to the needs that each district has on a worldwide that are facing on different ways and the same destinations for COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much. I apologize. I would like to present another video to represent and to take the social assistance, those places that we have been helping out. El municipio y sus colaboradores trabajan por ti. El mes de mayo trabajamos día a día de manera continua para llevar a los cinco corrimientos que componen este distrito. De los corrimientos de Puerto Rico, Punta Laurel, Tierra Oscura, Boca del Toro y Cauchero. Gracias a las donaciones y recursos del municipio, hicimos posible la entrega de bananos, pescado, bolsas de alimentos. Sabemos que la crisis cada vez afecta más a nuestras familias. Estamos contigo. Lo más importante es tu salud. Quisiéramos we are with you. Mucho más, the most important thing would be your health. We would like to offer more and more, but we are working with Amigo what God Catrino, and good people se are allowing us to do. Even though the restrictions are lifted, we ask you for your families, friends and neighbors, stay home. We do this for you. God bless you all. Thank you. 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 Thank It was you for you to have an idea for you to imagine how difficult it is for us to be working in an island, taking the social assistance around to all of the districts that we represent. Thank you so much for allowing me to participate. Thank you so much, Emiliano, for telling you, telling us the challenges and presenting the videos and the richness of all of this. We have 15 minutes to spare for question and answer session and to open a little bit more the debate. I have two questions, some from the participants and others from myself. I will start with two for Emiliano as we just heard his presentation. 
And then I'm going to be asking Marisol. I hope you are able to hear me. Uh, Emiliano, lo que le quiero preguntar es... What I would like to ask Emiliano in the videos, we're able to see very clearly that the island and Panama in general, it is a neurologic center for biodiversity. And to everything related to weather change, or climate change can affect negatively the coral reefs, the tides, and islands such as Boca del Toro. Pandemic will end, let's be optimistic, but climate change will continue. I would like to ask Emiliano, if in the municipality level and in the national government level, there are projects, there are measures with the community input for us to be able to adapt towards climate change. Panama, as many countries, is not responsible for climate change, but they can do things to adapt to climate change. So I would like to ask you, Emiliano, if you can comment this a little bit about the environmental richness and the measures that have been adopted to defend this. As you mentioned before, we are very rich on a national and worldwide of the different biodiversities that we offer as a nature. And this is the key for us to be able to reactivate tourism in Boca del Toro. This municipality and the previous administration, there was some a law issued locally for the district where they started working specifically with a non-use of plastic bags as this was a long-term polluting agent, 50, 100 years. Everything related to a plastic took time to disintegrate. And this initiative started to be executed last year in our district. And the government executed at the same time, this same plan for not only the district, but on the national level for us to have this, as it was fundamental for us to have the initiative and started start working about how we can take good care of the environment and everything generated by the touristic visits. The potential that we had over nature could be in danger throughout time if we do not take measures related to this topic. At the same time, we are working with the recollection of solid waste and the plastic bottles. And this is creating 60% of the volume of solid waste in our island. The increase of the touristic visits increases the plastic use and the bottles in my district. There was no plan in the past for us to be able to minimize the use of plastic bottles. Right now, the municipality is working along with ATP for us to have a recycling plan and for us to be able to find in a mid long term for us to tackle this issue associated to the plastic use. This is a work in which we are committed during this administ administration, excuse me, and for us to be able to incentivate the next administrations as we are not external, eternal, excuse me, during this administration is for us to avoid further issues. So we are not able to maintain for the plastics to be burned where the garbage is kept because of that is a polluting agent. So it affects our environment because of that is the air that we are breathing. So we are working towards this path and we are developing the plan for us to be able to develop this in a mid and long term and for our youth to have this level of commitment to follow up on this and for next year for us not to speak about the same topic or the same starting points, but to follow up on this or these type of 
discussions. Thank you so much. It is very important to highlight the topic associated to the solid waste are very different. In Scotland, they have the same issue, specifically the smaller islands, so that is a common issue to many of the communities. And tourism at the same time as an engine or as part of the society and the economy. Performing this link and this connection with tourism, I am directing the question to Marisol because one of the questions that came from our participants, it comes from Alejandro Nunez. And Alejandro would like to know anything else about the tourism and energetic efficiency in Porvenir. And if you allow me, during the presentation, you said that there are three towns in the island from Chile, of course. And one, an oil town, oil producing town. And obviously, and the energy and the South Cone, the oil is still an important industry that generates a lot of employment, but obviously it has issues. I would like to know if you can briefly add anything else about the touristic topic of the energetic efficiency and the energetic sector. Thank you. Well, Francesco, it is a very important question. And we need to think more than anything that the touristic development goes along with the clean and renewable sources of energy. I believe that we need to leave aside the fossil fuels here in the region we have two factors. One, I'm going to be speaking about the different seasons. So we have long days and summer and short nights and during winter is the opposite and we have a lot of wind. What I'm trying to say is that we need to perform a mix of energies and thinking of a photovoltaic energy and also wind energy, wind generated energy. And with that, we can combine this very well to make the touristic development that is uh, sustainable and used with uh, renewable sources of energy. Thank you so much, Marisol. There is another question and it's directed to Marisol as well and comes from Maria in Buenos Aires. And Maria is asking about the international relationships with Argentina. For those that are not from the region, Marisol is the major of a town, a province that is the divided island, that's how it's called, because part is in Chile and the other part is in Argentina. And it's not as common when we speak about islands and you think about all the islands in the world that there are not as many that are shared by two countries, sovereign countries. Marisol is in a particular situation and we wanted to know if you can add something else about that relationship with your neighbor country in Argentina in general. Well, I would like to say Maria that we have a brotherhood, let's say, with the Argentinian. And we have also a career, a run. It is a rally, a car rally. And also we meet with the elderly population and we have a very good relationship. And a particular characteristic is that those of us that are from Tierra del Fuego, even though if we're Chile or Argentina, we are called Fueguinos. So we are together Fueguinos in the island, independently if we are from Chile or Argentina. And we work, we educational exchange, we sustain meetings to see how we are moving forward from the energy, uh, tourism sectors, associations and the sports encounters with the different students for us to be able to take different delegations to the Argentinian side and from the Argentinian side to the Chilean side. We work together and we are siblings, brothers and sisters, all of us. Perfect, thank you so much. I wonder if this friendship exists at the same time every four years when there's a World Cup, but we're not going in depth with that topic. I wanted to ask a question to Emiliano, but 
Okay, from this question, we're going to touch base a topic. It's a broader topic that maybe Marisol can give her input as well. The local governments, the islands, islands that are far away from the capital of the country. Emiliano mentioned something that is very positive that during the pandemic, the Panamian Panama government, excuse me, has stopped some projects and has redistributed some resources to the rural communities and to the island communities. But this takes us to a general question that I asked Emiliano. I would like to ask Emiliano and Marisol as well, and it will be the relationship between the center, the state, and the island, the islands. What I would like to know is, for example, in Panama, in Bocas del Toro, there's a status of autonomy, specific competencies, special treatment, let's say, or if Bocas del Toro is considered like any other region or province from Panama. Yes, the relationship we have with the central government. As a local government with the central government, it is within normal standards. As a district of the island, we do not have the privilege of receiving more than other districts on a national level that are not island states. All of the resources destined in a particular moment were canceled, were put on a halt for those resources to be destined per des district. If uh, they wouldn't depend on agriculture or tourism, for them to have available the resources that were allotted, for us to be able to provide a solution to the district, to the general population. The fact that we are an island, we have uh, the double issues as we have more logistic expenses for us to be able to provide water, food to the island states. As a district, I have a five islands that I need to represent. And those are not close to my office. I need to get on a boat and move to each of the islands where the population requires assistance, which increases the cost of this municipality. And with that being said, of course, our resources will be affected because of that will not reach 100% of the population. We have a ferry that connects our island with the mainland. The nourishment, the vehicles, the fuel needs to be moved in the ferry, which increases the cost. When it costs $1 in mainland, it will be $1, 10, 20. It doubles the expenses and increases the expenses, which complicates the situation in our district. But the government is paying close attention of all the municipalities on a country level without distinction on the race or political parties. Recently, there is a centralization process of a public administration. The administration and decentralization where the government is granting resources and is giving these resources to the municipality, municipalities. And thanks to this, we haven't had any differences with the central government. We have worked in the different municipalities, as I already mentioned independently, on the political party that we belong to, we have had the support from the central government. If they didn't take the necessary measures for us to be able to provide all the resources. The fact that we are an island state, it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's not impossible. If we are healthy enough and we do not get COVID-19, we're gonna keep working for everyone to receive the resources. Thank you so much, Emiliano. Marisol? Taking COVID out of the issue, in Tierra del Fuego, 
In the Chilean context, uh, there is a certain level of autonomy as a province, region, or state, however you call it in Chile, like any other? Well, I would like to say that our country, it, it is a united country. Santiago is the capital. And everything is managed around Santiago, the metropolitan region and the surroundings, the north and the south. Chile is very large in South America and we have a broad land. Small communities like us tend to be invisible and it's very difficult for us, the authorities, for us to be seen, for us to be heard and for us to get resources. There's a contradiction with this being said. Based on the distribution and the investment, investment projects. I'm sorry, she froze. Marisol, I'm not able to hear you. James, can you hear me, Marisol? Her voice is breaking up. I apologize. I'm not able to understand what she's saying because it's breaking up. It seems she's having issues with the internet. Marisol, unfortunately, there are some issues with audio. The best thing is that this happened now instead of the beginning. Can you hear me now? Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, can you please continue with what you were saying? What I was saying that is very complicated, of course, in extreme con places from the capital, it is very difficult for us to get the resources, of course. Even with that being said, even though we struggle, we are able to obtain the resources. She froze again. It seems that the connection is not working very well. But anyways, we are concluding this session. A session that is extremely important for a virtual island summit, not only for these topics, but due to the interesting things that Emiliano and Marisol have mentioned and have spoken about, and due to the fact that at the same time that it was sustained in Spanish. It is very important for the virtual island summit to open up to the island communities and to do this in more languages, either than English and Spanish. This is a session that where we have simultaneous interpretation, but I see this as a, a start of a multicultural debate, multilinguistic event that is enriching all of us. And with that being said, I would like to thank the interpreters. It's not easy to do this on site, I can imagine how difficult it is to do this remotely, but I am certain that you have done a very, very good job. I would like to invite all of you once again to review the document that James and the team and our team from Strathclyde about islands and COVID develop and many of the topics that, that Emiliano and Marisol have mentioned sustainability, climate change, in one way or the other is represented in the report, which is the voice of 83 islands in 54 countries of the world. With that, I would like to conclude. I would like to thank all of the participants. It's wonderful. I would like to congratulate James and his team. And I would like to invite all of you to connect tomorrow to the for the last day that will conclude tomorrow in English and it would have a, a wonderful closing for us to con conclude the virtual island summit a big hug to Marisol and Emiliano thank you so much for joining us talk to you later